2022 Republican primary election happening soon. Who do you plan to support, Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis? Well, who am I going to support? Well, Joshua, as you've noticed, uh, my endorsement means a lot to American voters. Um. <laughs> This is the new me, Joshua. I, I started to grasp, but this, it is relevant. I, I, I just interviewed Mike Tyson. And like, I had no interest in interviewing Mike Tyson. I didn't know anything about Mike Tyson, you know, what I remember him boxing, but that was it. And two really good friends of mine said, well, you don't know Mike Tyson? I was like, how would I know Mike Tyson? You know, I host a show on Fox. Like Mike Tyson is actually a wonderful person, a totally honest person, really smart, and you should interview him. And so I did, I interviewed Mike Tyson. And my friends are absolutely right. He's one of the most interesting. I'm still thinking about what he said, believe it or not. And it's like, that's why life is wonderful. You're always surprised. And I was, I was shocked by what a marvelous and good person Mike Tyson was. But one of the things that he said that I've been thinking about ever since, a week and a half ago, I said, you know, you go out in public a lot and you're one of the most famous people in the world and I'm sure everyone's nice to you, but some people are probably not nice. How do you feel when people criticize you? And he said, because he's extremely sincere, he said, you know, when I feel like I'm somebody, I'm really offended by it. But when I remember I'm nobody, it's okay. And I thought, I need to be more like that. That's exactly right. I mean, let's be honest. Who cares what I think? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not endorsing anybody. I have no idea what's going to happen in the Republican primary. I am, I spend a lot of time in Florida and... I think Ron DeSantis has done like an unbelievable job. And I mean that. I don't know DeSantis that well, but let me put it this way. People move to Florida because he's the governor. I've lived in a lot of states. You know, I grew up in California. I've lived in DC, Rhode Island, Arkansas. Like I've kind of, you know, I've lived in this country for over 50 years. I know it pretty well. And I've never lived in a state where people just like unbidden at dinner are like, you know, I'm really, really glad we have our governor. What? You know, like, I've never lived in a place where people knew who the governor was. The governor? Really? Was he here? No, I just love him. But people will literally say that about Ron DeSantis where I live. It's like, what? So I'm so impressed by that. Um, I'm so grateful that Donald Trump ran in 2016. Donald Trump, like... <laughs> Donald Trump completely changed my view of everything. Donald Trump is why I left Washington. And he did it in a really simple way by asking questions that no one around him could answer. He showed up and said things like, why don't we have a border? Shut up! <laughs> Shut up, racist! <laughs> or my personal favorite, he's like, what's the point of NATO? <laughs> and you're like, and, and I, I grew up, I mean, my dad worked for the government and I was, you know, had a front row seat to the Cold War. I mean, it was like being waged in my house. Like my dad worked for the government fighting the Soviets. So like NATO was like a great thing because it kept the Soviets from invading Western Europe. But that ended in August of 1991. But I never thought about it again until 2016 when Donald Trump brought it up. Ever. What's the point of NATO? And I thought, well, that's a great question. I've, what's the answer? And all my neighbors were like, shut up, racist. Shut up. <laughs> And that's when I realized, oh, wait, I live in a city where nobody can defend what we're doing. And if people can't defend what they're doing, they shouldn't be doing it. It's really simple. If you can't defend what you're doing, you're doing the wrong thing. If you're doing it in secret, you're doing it for a reason in secret, because you're doing the wrong thing. Secrecy abets evil. And if you have an entire system built on secrecy, where they won't release the Kennedy files after 59 years, because they were involved in it, actually, and that's true, it's not speculation, then you've got a really rotten system. And I, who I think am pretty observant, I wouldn't have known any of that unless, until Trump showed up. And I started asking these kind of like autistic simple questions, like, why are we doing it that way? Shut up, racist! And it just exposed the whole thing, and I'm so grateful to have seen that. And I also, I should also add, since why not, I actually love Donald Trump as a guy. And I, I know Trump. I've known Trump for 20 years because I work in the media, you know. And I just have always gotten along with him. And um, I think he's one of the funniest people I've ever talked to in my life. I think he's got this unbelievable life force to him. 
talking to Trump, especially when it's not an interview, you don't actually want to interview Trump. That's a nightmare because you can't get him to answer any questions. Because <laughs> it's the Trump train, you can get on or off, but you can't steer it. Um, yeah, don't ever interview Trump. <laughs> but, uh, but talking to Trump is one of the great joys, one of the great animal joys of life because he exudes this kind of animal joy. And, and I love that, and I do. And, and I, the, the characterizations of Trump is like this force of evil. It's like, no, that's Liz Cheney. I'm sorry, that's not. Like, what are you even talking about? I mean, I think, and I've said it, I mean, I criticize my own children, and they're not allowed to criticize me. Just kidding. Um, but I think there are plenty of things to criticize about Trump. I mean, he's a human being. But the idea that he's like this personally some monster is like absurd. It's so, it's like it's just another lie. They always tell the opposite of the truth. Trump is like totally charming and engaging and fun and interesting. And the last thing I'll say about Trump that I really love is that his insights into people, which are always expressed in this, because I, I use words for a living, so I notice how people express things. Trump expresses himself in this way that's like completely original, completely original. But his insights into people are like, uh, they're like unbelievable. Now, I don't think he's that great at hiring, just being honest, uh, to put it mildly, but into other people, like, what do you think of so-and-so? And Trump will sum them up perfectly. World leaders, that's who this person is. It's like, it's, it's truly a gift. So there's so much I like about Trump, and, and fundamentally I agree with him, you know, on the big things, on immigration, foreign policy, I strongly agree with him. So like, I, you know, thank heaven I don't have to think through how this is going to end. I mean, at this point, it does seem like two like forces moving toward one another at high speed. Um, and how can that go well? And the answer is, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going to happen. There was like a period of a couple weeks where I was like, I've, you know, I'm in the news business. I got to find out how this movie's going to end. And then I realized, especially after the midterms, no idea. It's a cliffhanger. And I'm just happy to report on it day to day. I don't have to have official feelings on it or tell people you should vote for this person or that person. Like, I, I see a million sides of it, and I, I, I think it'll work out a little better than... I know every person in this room is terrified of some horribly destructive primary that hobbles the party and lets, you know, 83-year-old Joe Biden continue to... Can, can continue to allow Barack Obama to actually run the country. And um, that is a nightmare scenario. But I don't think it's assured. Last thing I'll say, if you had, again, I've done this since 1991, so you'd think I'd be better at predicting things. But if you had said to me, well, actually, I'll tell you. This is actually a true story. I'm sitting in the car at some point going somewhere in 2015. And Trump calls me. I'll never forget this moment. And he calls me and he goes, uh, you know, I've got, a, I've got an announcement. I think I'm going to kind of surprise you. And I was like, yeah, right. You're, you're running for president. Right, okay. Because I had seen this before in 2000. That's how old I am. He ran for president to sell a book or whatever. And I started laughing. And I'm like, you got another book coming out? And he's like, and he goes, no, actually, I'm serious. I think I'm going to surprise you. And he was, he was so different from, I talked to him a lot. I've never heard him like this. And at this point, he's a media figure. He just works at NBC, where I used to work. Like, I, you know, he's in the world that I live in. But I don't think of him as like a real presidential candidate. But there was something in his voice that was so different that I actually wrote it down on my little calendar thing on my iPhone. Donald Trump calls and says he's going to run for president. I took it seriously. But the amazing thing is that until that moment, I would have bet my house that that would have been impossible. Like, I did not see it coming at all. I didn't see it coming. And that event completely changed American politics forever, for good and bad, but it changed it forever. That was a transformative event. And I didn't predict it. So we are two years out, two years minus one month out from the presidential election. So I am completely comfortable putting my total ignorance on full and florid display.